Okay, I think it might be dead. <laughs> that was probably not the smartest idea. Oh my gosh, what just happened? Welcome back to Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. My name is Tobel, this is Sarah Brown, and we are downstairs in our last Man on Earth shelter. A quick change in the schedule for this, I actually plan to make longer videos for Cataclysm, mostly because I think that, uh, you know, you sit down and you're watching this and you kind of want to engage with this, uh, maybe probably while you're playing your own playthrough, but it's going to make a little more sense to do a little bit longer of a run-through uh, per episode. So, I'm going to grab, first thing we do this episode is grab ourselves a quiver, and we're going to load up a uh, 2x4 here in the fire, and I'm going to start a fire. Do to do as soon as I find the lighter. What we're going to do this episode is do a couple things for defenses. First off, I'm going to make myself a bow, uh, because we don't have anything that's quiet and ranged. Now, a bow would be great because we have, obviously, there's just an, un an endless supply of wood around, and we would make uh, be able to make our own arrows without too much trouble. So, looking at the stats here, the longbow seems like it does 10 damage, while the short bow does four and self bow does five. There's also a crossbow in here too. The crossbow is going to do 17, but it needs uh, three, what is this? Three long strings of two. So we should actually have the ability to make a crossbow. Now what about the reload time? That's once, it's 29 seconds to reload that, while a long bow is going to take uh, four seconds. Now that's obviously the big difference. So we're going to be doing massive damage per shot with a crossbow, but that reload time is going to be very, very painful. So, ooh, a repeating crossbow. How about that? Wait, seriously? Just needs one spring and we have this? Uh, damage is 12 with a reload time of one of two seconds with a capacity of 10 rounds of bolts. So, I mean, that's still not bad, but even so, 12 damage compared to a longbow's four damage, or sorry, 10 damage, and a constant four seconds for reload. I, th I think the longbow is going to be the one to go with. So let's go ahead and make ourselves a longbow, see if we don't fail it. Uh, long stick, long string, sure and sure. Cool. We memorized the recipe for the longbow too. So in fact, we didn't know how to make that. We were pulling that recipe from a book. So it is important to keep crafting items from the books. That way you'll have a chance to memorize those recipes. So we've wielded the longbow. I think I can even wear it. Yeah, sure enough. We can wear the longbow. I've got a quiver that I already had. Uh, we picked up from one of the houses. And it looks like it can hold 60 ammunition. So let's go back into the crafting menu into ammo. And if we're looking at arrows, we have crude wooden arrow, small game arrow, and a makeshift wooden arrow. So I'm seeing that they are 3, 4, and 6 in bash, with the makeshift wooden arrow having a damage of cut. I don't know if this applies, um, like is it, is it some of your bow damage plus whatever your, your arrow damage would be too? That would make sense, right? Because your bow is going to give it a certain amount of velocity, and then the arrow itself, how it's designed, is going to give it a certain bit of damage as well. So it looks like the makeshift wooden arrows are a little bit better for us to use. Arrow rest, what is this? A small extension above the grip of the uh, above, above the grip of the bow, which red and arrow rests upon. Improves accuracy with no drawbacks. Plastic chunk. We don't have an integrated tool set apparently, or a soldering iron. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and make ourselves a batch of wooden arrows. Now we're getting how many per? Okay, so we're two times would give us 20. So we're getting 10 per single crafting job. So we're going to make six. That way we make 60 arrows. We will use duct tape. <laughs> arrows with a bunch of duct tape and nails. Beautiful. And plastic bags. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, this is a long one. Holy cow. You memorize the recipe for the makeshift wooden arrow. We have it in our hands. And there we go. Sure enough, it is now inside of our... Or it's in our hands with 60. I think we can apply our quiver... Store ammo in large quiver, makeshift wooden arrow. Cool. Well, we are now self-sufficient in terms of a bow weapon. I am going to keep this pistol, though, just in case. You never know what's going to happen. Let's drop off a few other things. We've got a leather backpack we're wielding. Let's go ahead and drop off those torn long underwear bottoms and the t-shirt. We have no pants on. Do we have any pants? Uh, we, I think we have a cargo pants somewhere. Here we go, cargo pants. So what's Sarah wearing? She is with a Kevlar vest, firefighter belt, hoodie. So that is taking care of our warmth, and then we are obviously encumbered because we are wearing a uh, quiver, a longbow, and a backpack. So she's okay for the most part. Balaclava keeping her head nice and toasty. Hoodie doing pretty much everything else with those arm warmers and whatnot. Cool. All right, I think we are pretty well set. So what I wanted to talk about was what we are going to do for the next few episodes of Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead for Sarah Brown. Um, one of the things, obviously, we would, wanted to do is to continue our um, our repair and improvement of our RV. Now, someone pointed out a couple things. So, first off, if I look at the tank of water, 
I don't remember if this said clean water before or water, but I think someone pointed out that when we put this funnel here, it turned it into dirty water. And it makes sense. If you think if it's just an open tank, then yeah, you're going to have uh, you're going to have standing water. You're going to have other stuff leaking in uh, from maybe in the funnel itself. I don't know, but we it looks like we have to treat the water. Now, I don't know if we have to pull the tank out and we could we could go over here to the side and remove the tank of water, the 60 liter tank of water. I'm pretty sure we could drag it down to a fire and then pour it all into another 60 liter tank as well. So we'll have to take a look at that. Someone else came up with a really great idea. I did rebuild the cart between our episodes here where it kind of got exploded. So our folded cart is still in existence. Let me grab myself a, um, a hose. Oops, I actually have to hit the right arrow. Oh, by the way, someone mentioned, and I remember I was struggling with this really hardcore, if I wanted to pick up one of any type of item, I can basically go over to the item itself, press a number first, and then press the right arrow. And I picked up one of that. So I typed in one and then pressed right. So if you want to pick up one from the um, uh, from the quick look, this is kind of the multi pickup here. Uh, you can just do the number and then whatever you want to have. And we were also discussing power when we were in our Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead Discord channel. And a lot of folks were recommending that we look up, to, uh, we look at getting some kind of books that will give us the skill of universal power supply and the ability to modify a tool to have said universal power supply. So we could basically say, I'm going to have my amp goggles be a universal power supply. I, I think we actually have one, smartphone UPS right here. This has been modded to accept uh, UPS types of, uh, I think it's, U yeah, here it is. So. Runs on a small rechargeable power cell compatible with unified power supply. Sorry, unified power supply. So what that means is I think if we mod pretty much all of our power stuff, we will find a way to recharge our uh, equipment with um, kind of like if we if we have a, a stationary bike and we attach a battery to it and an alternator, we should be able to power our own battery. Not entirely sure. Power is one of those things that we're going to have to mess with a little bit. What am I down here for? I need myself. Getting all sorts of distracted. What I want to do is head out to get some gasoline. Oh, we're going to need some cash cards for money. Do we have any other cash cards? I thought we had, like, a ton of those things lying around. No cash cards here. I don't think we have any cash cards anywhere else. I thought we had a bunch more, though. Not here, and probably not in the big stack of clothing. Okay, I guess we only have two cash cards. I have to get a little bit better about picking those up then, apparently. Uh, let's go ahead and grab a bit of a drink since we're right here. Someone also mentioned the reason, one of the reasons I might have trouble with food, I did let myself get down to, like, starvation before. So she, you know, Sarah was in a really bad spot with food, and it might have really hurt her long term. So she was, she's constantly having to try to catch up, basically, on food. So I'm going to try to eat a little bit more frequently than I have been. That way we don't get to a point of, you know, getting into that uh, starvation mode again. I'm going to eat some toastums here. There we go. We went from peckish to full. So we are now full. Actually, we took a step away and we're no longer full. <laughs> Fair enough. There we go. We drank a little water and now we're full and slight. I also went a little crazy with drinking water. So there's a chance that I might have drank too much water and screwed us up that way as well. So I'm going to need it myself a wrench for what I'm going to do. So let's grab a wrench. If I could spell the wrench correctly. Perfect. So I've got a wrench, I've got a rubber hose, right? I've got, uh, that sh should be all I need. I've got my folding card as well. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go over here. We're going to apply our folded cart to extend it out. I'm going to actually steal the gasoline tanks from this random flatbed truck. So if I go over to where the uh, vehicle tank gasoline is, I'm going to press O to remove it. And, oops, sorry, we need a tool with metal sawing. It's metal sawing, not wrench. My bad. Okay, hang on. We can do this just fine. We have hacksaws aplenty. There's our hacksaw. So what I'm going to do is basically cut the metal or cut the tank free of the truck. We're going to put the tanks inside of our cart and we're going to go over to where the uh, gas uh, gas station is. We're just going to get ourselves a gas tank from or some filled gas from there. So I kept thinking that, oh, I have to constantly, you know, I have to bring my vehicle to the gas tanks. I have to bring my vehicle and that's what I was really nervous about because there's a lot, you know, there's a lot of zombie friends around there. No, we actually just need to have something we can fill, uh, you know, with gasoline. So all we need to do is move these 60 gallon or 60 liter tanks 
directly into our vehicle. I, I think I put them on the floor instead of carrying them. There we go. It's, the, it's uh, let's see, 11 o'clock at night, too, so we should have plenty of room or plenty of time to get over to where we need to go. Let me turn safe mode back off. I'm going to fast forward a bit until we're at the gas station itself. Okay, we are just around the corner from the gas station, so hopefully we can get in here and sneak in and grab some gasoline. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll fill these tanks up, and then we'll take these tanks back to our handy-dandy RV. Here we go. I'll be a little bit stealthy about it. All right, so we're going to go right next to this uh, gas tank. I bet we have to use the computer, the self-service computer, before we're able to use the pump. Use gasoline pump, yes, out of order. So if we talk to the computer, we're going to say we want to buy gas. Uh, by a maximum of 44L. Okay, uh, so our cash cards now hold... Oh, wow, we actually used all of our cash cards to grab that gasoline. So now we're going to use the pump, yes, pour into a container, and then pour it into the 60-liter tank of gasoline. Now, if we get items from here, in fact, we do have 47,000 liters of gasoline now, which is super freaking awesome. That's exactly what I was hoping for. Uh, we've used up pretty much all the money on the card, though. So now all we have to do is get back to our RV and then do a traditional siphon. We can basically siphon, or sorry, we unload, I think. We'll act. We'll, we'll look at the information on the tank that's in our cart and we'll unload it and then load it into our RV through the use of a hose. The other thing I want to do is make a run back to our, our garage here. A big thank you to Dread and to Fun Socks in our Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead channel in our Discord because they've been coming up with tons and tons of suggestions and advice. So I really appreciate you guys helping me out as someone who is kind of like a, a casual fan of Cataclysm. I've only I've only relatively recently been into it, and the mid to late game is still a huge, huge mystery to me. Uh, we were also discussing the fact that apparently the developers of the game have said in the subreddit, in the Cataclysm subreddit, that they try to balance the game around people who are going to pick a class and, and kind of um, min-max their start. It, well, not even min-max, it's really just optimizing, because I picked a very, you know, generic character who's not at all optimized for the uh, end of the world. So, what they mean by this is that if you, and I didn't know this either, if you pick a character, so let's say we're in our character creation, and we pick ourselves the home mechanic, that is an actual profession. And anytime you take a skill that's associated with a profession, you get an extra skill point every time you put a point in. From what I understand, I don't know if that's exactly 100% uh, if I've got it right or not, but uh, if you were to have, say, the mechanic skill or the mechanic profession, and you then take the mechanic's skill, every one point you put in, you're going to get an extra one because it's related to your profession. So you could easily start the game with eight in, you know, mechanics or something like that, eight in fabrication, eight in whatever you want, because you're able to dump that many skill points into it. There's a lot of banging going on here that I'm passing by <laughs> that I'm just going to ignore for a moment. I'm going to put safe mode back. I'm going to really nervous about... I like to hold down the number, um, you know, numpad here to move my move my character along to a kind of spam the movement. So hold, putting the... Enabling safe mode is really going to be helpful to avoid getting smashed in the face. We're going to sprint pi past this guy. Our card is a little bit damaged right now. I think I managed to get one more person to smack it. So I don't want to have a repeat of last episode because that was a pain in the butt. I had to run back and forth like a thousand times. All right. We are outside of our fancy garage. The... Um, garage of glory here somewhere because someone else caught fun socks caught the fact that he thought that this uh this uh crane here this is a engine crane is foldable and sure enough it does have a foldable light frame so we should be able to fold this vehicle pick it up or we'll, we'll just move it from the ground move it from the ground into our our cart so now we actually have our crane that we can use now now we can actually really do some uh some thievery on other vehicles to try to take whatever we need for our rv and that's what I, my goal is to kind of uh, pillage and, and pilfer whatever I need to make our vehicle uh, the best vehicle in the world. We also could grab... Let me take a look here. I would love to grab some, some spare tires from, you know, different areas. Can we grab this battery just for fun? If I want to... Here's the car battery. It's actually in really good shape. If I remove the car battery, it's going to just need bolt turning. Oh, we have the strength for this. Let's just remove the battery. We'll load the battery up inside our cart. Maybe we'll set up a nice little battery stand where we've got, like, seven or eight batteries. I, I, can you, like... That's one of the survivalist things. You've got, like, a rack of batteries, like, eight batteries that you can charge up over time. Can you do that in this game, too? Can you have them all connected? Uh, we've got clocks, nothing else that might really jump out. <clears throat> we can easily get steel frames from other vehicles, too. So if we want to extend our vehicle, make it, you know, larger, 
we would just need to grab steel frames from other vehicles, which is just super easy. A lot more easy uh, to do than to make your own steel frame, just to pillage something from another vehicle. And one of the other suggestions for our RV is we do have a camera system. Remember, I looted a camera system from the tanks that were way to the southwest. So we can take the camera system, we can put that onto our RV. What are you? Oh, you're just a casual light tank just kind of hanging out in the middle of the city. With apparently enough engines and wheels. Oh my gosh, that's funny. I wish I could take my uh, my cart in there with it. Are you still following me, my friend? I'll tell you what, let's practice our archery a bit. Let me step back a bit. And I don't know how long it takes to wield it. I like that when you fire, you immediately just pick your bow, your arrow from your quiver. Like, you don't have to do anything but just, like, press F. And there you go. Let's go ahead and do a careful shot. C. Oh, you know what? We have a book at home that I need to read. We have a we have a an archery book that I can grab. Oh, cool. We actually have uh, three arrows left out of the what? How many did we... We fired... Uh, one, two, three. Actually, I think it recovered all the arrows that we lost, which is pretty freaking cool. Oh, no, you know what? They automatically... Oh, that's really neat. When I picked up the arrows, they automatically were put into the quiver. How cool is that? Very, very cool. I also can set up, and I should set up, a auto pickup manager rule. Oh, I do have one for arrow. Okay, I did that at some point. Um, so these are auto pickup rules. You can enable the entire system, and then you can en enable or disable certain rules within it. So if you ever want to pick something up as you come across it, and you don't have to put you know, all your time into pressing E on every character you find, you can actually just kind of add whatever item you want. So if you want to pick up, say, a rucksack, anytime you find a rucksack, you can do this. You can do rucksack with wild cards around it. And then anytime your character ever runs across a rucksack, like on an, a zombie corpse. Wow. <laughs> That's hilarious. I didn't even look at that and notice it. So we immediately just picked up one military rucksack. How cool is that? I didn't even notice that this dude had a uh, rucksack on him. We'll grab this thermos too. And a bag of pretzels. Mmm, pretzels. Delicious. All right, we're going to grab the refillable lighter as well. Cool. I would love to steal some stuff off this tank, like, oh, I don't know, the M60? The whole freaking thing? Can I can I actually make this thing work? Oh my gosh, it actually will work. <sighs> can I... We are up here. How much does this thing have? It's got 2% diesel. I don't know if this is going to make it all the way down to our little base. This is what we'll try to do for fun. We're going to fold our vehicle. Okay. We've got our vehicle folded on the ground, I think. I think I could stand here. Look at the ground all around us. There we go. I can use the A symbol. Go up here for the trunk. Can I put the giant thing of gasoline inside here? 60-60. That's got space for it. Oh, that's so cool. Folded cart. Folded engine. Or folded battery. Engine crane. I don't know where, where folded battery came from. Yeah. So everything is right now sitting inside of this trunk in our tank. <laughs> this is so cool. Uh, let me grab these earplugs here. And I'm actually going to wear a pair of earplugs just in case we need to go shoosting. Let's turn on the vehicle. Some of the engines start up. That's fine. We only need a few. Let's control multiple electronics to turn on the camera system. <laughs> That's so cool. Oh, no. We don't have any uh, We don't have any, any cameras in the front. Can I do... Let's see. Uh, control vehicle. Turn on headlights. There we go. I can actually see because the camera is working in front. That's awesome. Well, we're just going to cruise through town here. I don't know if we're going to make it all the way, but I'm going to try to speed up so that we have some... Oh, God. Momentum. Oh, God. <laughs> slow, slow down the tank. Slow down the tank. Uh, let me straighten things out here. Maybe this is what I need to use to break through the bunker. We've been talking about going into the bunker down south. Now, I've got an ID card for the bunker. The problem is that I'm fairly sure that there is a... Um, crap. Does the road end here? Oh, shoot, it does. I needed to take a, a left back at Albuquerque. All right. Let's come back a bit. Um, so when you go inside of the bunker, and I've been in here before, and it was a, a, a sad end to one of my playthroughs, because there are like five or six turrets just inside the door. And the um, you, you actually, I don't know if the, the military ID card will do anything different. I'm assuming they're still going to be hostile, pretty much to anyone at all. So if we do this, we're going to have to need, you know, we're going to need a way to either neutralize the turrets or... Uh, kind of be there long enough for the turrets to shoot their ammunition out. So if I break in the door with a tank, that should give the um, give the system long enough to... Uh oh we're leaking gasoline. Uh, that should give the system long enough to kind of blow through all of its its ammo, right? That's my, that's my theory, anyways. 
I was about to say this thing drives like a tank, but yeah, you know, kind of accurate. God, there's so many vehicles on the side of the road here, or in the middle of the road. Bit of an inconvenience. Let's see, we can go one... F I think I can curve around the corner. There we go. I, I think I can also just, like, pl power on through these vehicles. Let's just keep pressing forward and see what happens. I don't think we get it damaged as much. It's a freaking tank, right? Oh god, I'm gonna break the game by trying to do this. Regain control of the tank. We're trying to just power on through here. <laughs> I think I'm trying to actually run into like three or four vehicles. Okay, I think it might be dead. <laughs> that was probably not the smartest idea. Oh my gosh, what just happened? I pressed uh I pressed the center key quite a few times and I think it got a little bit confused. Well, we're still rolling. <laughs> I have no idea how the tank is still rolling, but we're super rolling. All right, that's fine. This is why I can't have nice things. This is why they never let me drive uh, a tank in the military. So let's keep going down south. We're at the right spot. We just have to keep powering on through. So yeah, maybe we back up a vehicle or back up a tank into the main door of the bunker. Let the turrets shoot out all of its ammunition at us, at our faces. And then we promptly just walk in once all of the ammunition is out. It's a theory. Now the problem is I don't know what's I don't know what's downstairs in a bunker. I have no idea if it's you know if it's got tons and tons of ammunition or if it's going to have you know a, a patrolling military bot or if it's going to have you know this or that. So my concern is that yes we can get in there through and, and kill the turrets, but we might not make it any farther in because there might be something horrible inside. All right, let's turn off the headlights. Turn off the EV. EV. Yeah. Uh, turn off the camera system and then we will. Uh, EV let go of the controls. Nice. Uh, we made it somehow. <laughs> all in one, all in one uh, easy run here. We completely trashed the front of our vehicle. That's fine. That's fine. At least we have a we have a rolling gun platform at this point. All right. I'm going to do the thing where we shuffle stuff from point A to point B. Over here and then down here. Just move everything. I'm gonna grab the ammo too because why not? Why not? All around us to the south. Yep. Cool. And now we can actually just use this dragging thing. Uh, wait, your hands are not free, which makes dragging slower. Let's wield the, or wear the longbow. There we go. And we'll drag all this stuff inside. Maybe it's not smart to drag down a bunch of high explosive rounds, especially not near fire, but we'll put this, we'll put these outside here. Uh, but yeah, there we go. We've got ourselves, <laughs> you know what? I I'm going to go ahead and, and err on the side of caution here. And we're not going to keep the explosive, the high explosive rounds downstairs. Let's let's keep these nice and maybe upstairs away from us. Right over here somewhere. That just seems smarter to me. I don't know. Just just a tiny, tiny bit. Cool. So now we have a tank that we can pillage. Oh, crap. I didn't mean to, to completely move the uh, the gas tanks there, too. Let's go ahead and do a up and down. We'll move the metal tanks off of each other. Or off of the rest of the stack. We'll bring these back upstairs. I'm going to go over to our RV, and if I go I, let's see, I have to, I have to, I think, equip the gas can that's got a lot of uh, stuff in it. We'll go ahead and wield it, I on it, unload into RV. We were at 20%, we're now at 99%. That is so freaking cool. That was a huge find. Awesome, awesome stuff. All right, let me go ahead and grab the other one, since we do have a little bit of gasoline in that one, too. I'll do the same thing. We'll do I, unload into nearby RV, and we're now at 100% gasoline. So our RV, our RV is now completely filled up to the brim. We are ready to rock and roll. How cool is that? Uh, let me also drop our metal tank. We don't really need that anymore. Yay, we've got stuff, stuff and things. I'm su super excited about that. So what's next? What's next for Sarah Brown and company? So obviously some repairs are in order. Now we do have some spare acetylene torches that have some decent charges to them. So we have a little bit of time, I think, and the ability to repair the vehicle up a bit. Um, what somebody said, I think I got distracted by a shiny thing when I was trying to talk about it. I can remove the, I think I can remove the whole front window completely and re kind of replace it with um, plating, some kind of a plating. So we would want to do, I don't know if it's going to show up because there's no space here. Does it, does it take up a frame slot? Is it called reinforcement? I'm not sure what I'm looking for here. Armor plating. Military composite armor plating or different plating like that. So armor plate will partially protect other components on the same frame from damage. So I think if we install plating of some sort, is there like basic plating? This requires the bone armor kit. 
A living blob acting as armor plate. Oh my god, that's funny. What if we do reinforcement here? Let me try that. Maybe it's going to be called a reinforcement. These are rebar. That's going to be, require a rebar grate. Steel plating would just require one steel plating. Do we? Can we make steel plating? Let's go back into our crafting menu. We could make steel plating with a lump of steel. Okay, so we, ac we actually can make steel plating if we wanted to. Um, but the, the basic idea was we, we possibly remove the front windows. We replace those windows with either, you know, some kind of plating or just a hull. You know, one part of the, the, uh, the, tr the truck itself. And we use a camera system to be able to see out front. And we just drive the truck from the safety of, you know, we don't even have to be at the front of the truck. We could be here in a command chair at the center of the vehicle or something. So that way we're able to, you know, kind of roll through town, especially if we find ourselves some reinforcement. We could roll into town, honk the horn, and then just start going back and forth, killing a bunch of zombies with our vehicle. So that's one way to maybe clear out some of the areas in different towns. Right. The other thing I was thinking about doing is removing some of the interior plating here. Uh, what would this be considered? Like right this middle door here, for example, uh, we could remove that. We could remove the board. I think the board is the vertical, this piece here. This is the board. These two things are the board. So we could remove those, uh, remove the passenger seat. We could even remove the side door and really only have one or two entrances up here. We could have one entrance to come in, walk down the center aisle. We could fill this entire side with storage. Because I do want to make this base, a mo you know, we want to live mobile at some point. We want to be able to travel the world and go out into other towns and whatnot. And we're going to have to have a lot of storage space. Now, my big concern is that the more weight we add on the vehicle, I'm a little bit concerned about how much the vehicle engine can support and how much the wheels can support. So it says that we've got, you know, a mass of uh, 5,338 pounds. Wow, it even, it even takes you into effect as soon as we stepped off the vehicle. How much does Sarah weigh? Uh, wow. Well, we have some stuff in our backpack. Okay, we won't feel too guilty about that. But it does have to support a certain amount of weight. Now, I don't see anything that says how much we're able to support with our current wheels, right? I don't see anything that says, oh, you can support X amount of, of pounds in weight. So I'm a little bit concerned that if we keep adding stuff to the vehicle, eventually the engine won't be able to pull it or the wheels won't be able to support it. We'll have to add more wheels in here. I think we can do that, but it's going to require a little bit of experimentation. Right. So we've got ourselves some gasoline. Let's talk about what comes up next. So I'm looking at the wiki. The item that I was thinking about for power is called the UPS conversion mod. It can be crafted when your skill in electronics is at five, which is going to be very, very challenging. Let's turn our headlamp on. Do we have anything that can raise our electronics super, super high? Uh, this is ham radio for one. From there, I don't see anything else that's going to raise up our skill that much. Ooh, fabrication to five, the Boyer's Buddy. That might not be bad. We might get some uh, quite a few recipes out of that. I do want to grab archery to two at some point. Electronics to one. Yeah, we don't have any electronics right now whatsoever. So we need to visit ourselves an electronics store. There is one in Brewster. Is this the only one in Brewster? Okay, so there's only one in Brewster. So maybe we'll do a run there um, tomorrow because it's almost at the end of the day here. Or it's going to turn in today. And we, we're trying to do all of our raiding at night just to be a little bit safe. So we could try to go grab the electronics books just to see what we can get. We also could probably pick up some solder, copper wire, things that we would actually need to use for that. Additionally, I think I want to grab my cart and engine. Uh oh let me, let me do this. Let me move them over from the gas tanks or the empty tanks now. We'll do cart and engine crane. I want to just carry these upstairs. I'm going to go see if we can't grab a few parts from some, some vehicles around here. So let's do stop hauling items. We'll activate the to pick up the folded cart. There we go. We'll load up the crane into our cart. Hooray. Grab that. Nice. So we've got a wrench. I think we've got a wrench and a hacksaw. That should get us quite far in the world of uh, in the world of vehicles. So I can go around a little bit. Hopefully, if it's not, let's see, it's about 3 a.m. So it's a little bit bright outside. It must be a full moon. Actually, we can see quite a bit of distance around here. I wonder. Remember, we we rolled over a vehicle with our with our tank. I wonder if we crushed or freed some of those solar panels from the vehicle. God, there's so many destroyed vehicles in this town. That is insane. <laughs> Here's a bunch of uh, zombies that we decided to crush. MP3 player, purse, pocket knife, things like that. Let me just shift V so I can look at it this way. 
There's a backpack in there too. I mean, we've got we've got like five backpacks at this point. I think we're fine. I think we're okay. Me avoid getting my cart destroyed if I could. Maybe turning a bus into something else would be fun too. I mean, a bus would have just one long central aisle, and you could load. You know, you could craft stuff or add stuff to the either side. Rip out all the seats in a bus and load up whatever you wanted. Okay, here's what I want to look at. We already did this once, but I want to, now I've got the crane here, and I want to see if that uh, there was a what is this thing called a rechargeable. A swappable battery container. If I try to remove one of these, what does it tell me? I have to remove the battery from the mount. To remove the battery, I need a tool with lifting of one. So if we get into our cart and unload the crane, and I think, oh, you know what? I have to stop doing this. I have to pick this up. I have to activate it to unfold it. There we go. So now we have the crane next to us. If I go back to the same spot and I do remove, we could, yes, we could, in fact, unload the storage battery. It's going to take us about 30 seconds. With that, poof, we have one lovely battery. Um, it weighs 400 pounds, MBD. No big deal at all. Can I actually even move this into my cart? 490 pounds. Apparently, the cart does not care how much it weighs. The cart is like, as long as I've got casters, I'm, ha I'm happy, my friend. All right, let's take a look at this swappable battery storage case. 24 minutes to remove this. We're going to try to remove it. Hopefully, we're not going to get interrupted by zombos. In fact, we did not. Cool. So, storage battery case. I can load that in my cart now. How cool is that? Super, super awesome. Let's go ahead and remove some of these solar panels since we're just right here. We're not in great shape, but that's okay. Zombie spotted. No, unless it gets close to me, I'm not going to move. Excellent. Let's go ahead and stop doing... Are we grabbing anything? I don't think so. Let me wield my longbow. Try to do a little bit more practice. I keep forgetting to, re uh, to read the book. I feel like it's wasted shots right now. I could be getting, um, you know, uh, skill from 2 to 3 instead of 1 to 2. Good night. We are, <laughs> we are not quite Robin Hood yet. Cool. We automatically picked up our arrows. All right. Back to stealing solar panels. That was actually a good one in good shape. Okay, he got a little bit closer, so we're going to go ahead and go fire on him. Our vision's starting to cut back down again, so we're, I think the sun's coming up. So whenever the sun comes up, you have like a little bit of a gap uh, between... We'll just walk around the fence instead of trying to climb the fence like an idiot. Your vision's going to cut down a bit as the dawn breaks. All right, let's try to remove this. Do you, does it keep how much time you spent before? Or do you have to restart every time you're doing something? I have no idea. What did I remove on accident? Did I remove something else? All right, so we pretty much have everything I want. There's still a... Uh, oh, there's actually a destroyed uh, solar panel in there, so we're not going to bother with that one. Solar panel, solar panel, solar panel. Uh, no stop moving sheet metal. Oh, actually grab sheet metal. That's fine. Let's go ahead and fold up our crane, put the crane into our cart, and there we go. How cool is that? That's so freaking awesome. I love this game. I honestly do. For, for all the things you can do, I mean, graphics are, you know, one thing, but the, the level of depth that you can do with this game is absolutely insane. We are pushing our insanely heavy cart. It's like 500 pound cart. We're just trying to uh, sh rub, uh, sh shove down the street here. I'm going to sprint a bit away from my friend. Try to get down the street and stop sprinting. And I will be back here once we get back to base. All right, I had to do a bit of uh, ninja maneuvers there to... Ooh, steel frame. Can I wield this? I'm going to carry this steel frame home because why not? Uh, I had to kite a few zombies away from our base but otherwise we're in good shape the um the cart i actually picked up another engine the cart is like super freaking heavy right now we're like straining ourselves to move this cart i wonder if it's going to hurt us if we try to move it off the road here apparently not okay <laughs> i've got a, a v8 engine what do i have in here i've got a 4.5 liter v8 engine does this run on diesel can i tell what it runs on Large engine block. That's interesting. I wonder if I could. If I dump every... Oh, hi. You came out of nowhere. Let me drop the frame. Wheel. You know, we'll just... Uh, we're going to melee this guy. What's our encumbrance, actually? 46. So, somebody mentioned that every every number in, in, in torso encumbrance reduces your chance to hit by a certain amount in, in the base mode. Like, if you have... I think if you have 30 encumbrance, that's a 30% chance or a 30% reduction in your melee skill. But... Whatever your melee skill is, it can kind of counteract that. So the more melee skill you have, the more you can be wearing on your torso to kind of counteract the negatives of all the stuff that you're carrying. So keep that in mind. If you want to get yourself into a nice big melee fight, you might want to remove your backpack, set it down on the ground, 
and then do all of your murdering from there. Um, so can I drop some stuff onto the ground from my cart? Just for funsies. Let's go ahead and drop out this engine. Couple things here. I have no idea if we're, you know, what we're able to do with this. All I want to do is just see, um, you know, what we have available to us. Let's pick up the engine crane and activate the engine crane. So if we wanted to say like 2.8 liter engine, if I wanted to install, I could install a new engine. If I wanted to remove the old engine, which is actually damaged again, remove the attached alternator first. If I want to remove this, no, I don't care about that. We've removed the alternator. Let's go ahead and... Are you coming towards us, by the way? Okay, no, no, nobody's interested in us just yet. Okay, if we want to remove the engine... Okay, the engine is gone. Now, if we want to install the V8 engine, that's all we would need is one V8 engine of one. How freaking awesome. The electric power drain is more... It still uses gasoline. Okay, so it still uses gasoline. It's going to be doing drain and power. I think this is the the electricity part. I don't know how much gasoline it's going to use, but hey, why not have a nice, strong V8? I feel like that's what Mad Max would do immediately. One tool with lifting of one. I thought this has a lifting of one. Did I do something wrong here? I'm right next to it. Let's go back to install. V8 engine. Oh, it's right there. I don't know. Maybe I was in the wrong tile. Was it that simple? You just plug you just plug and play? <laughs> we now have a 4.5 liter V8 engine ready to rock. Let's go ahead and install the alternator. Where did that go? Did I have it in my... Uh-oh, did I break it? Or is it in another part of the vehicle? Was it in such bad shape that it just instant fell apart? Oh, shoot. We don't have the alternator for it anymore. Where did that go? Did I have a message about maybe I broke it? You see here one truck... Wait, what did I do? Is it on the... Uh, get items from the ground. Oh, it's underneath... Okay, so it's under. it was underneath the... Uh, where it was at. It was underneath the crane instead. Um, install. On the engine. There it is. Truck alternator. Perfect. An alternator when mounted on a gasoline or diesel engine. And the batteries on will produce electrical power. Cool. So we're going to install the alternator. Well, that was pretty easy. <laughs> that was super easy to modify this vehicle. I mean, we just literally changed engines. This is a, it's just a casual V8 engine. was lying on the ground. It's been lying on the ground right over here uh, since we got over to our, our little base. So, yeah, why not? That sounds great. Look how easy that is to, to mess around with your vehicle. I'm so excited. Can I go ahead and remove some things? Like, let's remove this board and see what it looks like. So I removed the internal board from here. Okay, so it doesn't have a flooring on it. So we're going to have to install something on its place or in its place. But I could still, like, let's remove the internal door here. We could remove the, if I wanted to go over one, we could remove the board from here as well. So now we've got space to do it, to add whatever we want, right? So I can really, I can kind of strip the vehicle down of the parts that I don't want. And then we can figure out what we want to actually do with it. So here's a door here. We don't need to have this many doors on this vehicle. I want to have more security, right? So, whoops, wrong door. Completely wrong door. That's fine. <laughs> this is fine. Let's remove... The door from this side instead. We need to remove the curtain, I think. We need screw driving of one to remove that. Dagnabbit. All right, let's go downstairs. Let's grab a screwdriver. Come back up. Remove our fancy curtain, and then we will remove the door from the side of the vehicle. I mean, I do want to have a, 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 a door on either side of the vehicle because it makes sense for security reasons. If we're you know in a fight, we need to quickly get back inside the truck. We're going to want to do that as fast as possible. So we're basically breaking the vehicle down to its most simplest form, right? We're, we're stripping everything off. Let's go back to removing the old seat. There we go. So the vehicle is kind of st stripped bare bones. And I'm okay with that. I'm absolutely 100% okay with that. If I remove, let's, in fact, let's go ahead and look at the trunk here. Uh, there is a... This, where's the, where was the door? Here was the door. This is just an aisle. Let's remove the aisle itself. Cool. So... Everything has been removed here. I could, and I, I think you can't even see some things in your list to install unless it's like the, the thing was removed. So if you have anything on the ground, like this is a trunk. This tile right here is a trunk tile. So I couldn't look at that tile. Where's the trunk at? Here. I couldn't look at anything to install in this spot 
because the trunk is in the way, I believe. Now, if I move one more up where there's just the frame and the roof, now I'm going to have a lot more options here. I can put down a uh, sliding door, shutter door, things like that. If I want to add a trunk, I would need the acetylene torch. That's it. One tool of glare protection, one steel frame, which we actually have quite a few frames at this point. And honestly, are you guys going to chase? This is just a fox over here. I, if I wanted to, I could even start ripping things out of this vehicle. So what does it take? What if I remove the frame here to remove the quarter panel? Oops, I didn't mean to actually stop interacting with the vehicle. Remove, remove, remove quarter panel, please. Remove the frame. The frame is a steel frame, isn't it? No, we're going to ignore the child unless it comes to bite us. And then we'll have to actually, yeah. So we could strip down any vehicle we wanted to get as many steel frames as we need. And so that means we could even extend our vehicle's size and move it. You know, I don't know if we really want to do that, but I could uh, it, remove the back of the truck and extend it outwards and add myself a bit longer vehicle if I wanted more space. So we've got plenty of frames to do with whatever we need. God, this is so freaking cool. Let's remove some windows while we're at it. You know what? We're going to turn this episode into a uh, let's uh, do some car, car improvements here with Sarah. Sarah Brown's Auto Mechanic Shop. Perfect. This is probably better to be done away from a town. I mean, like having our base here on the edge of town is nice and all, but it is always a threat that we have quite a few zombies in the area. All right. All of the windshields have been removed from the front. Perfect. <laughs> this is this vehicle's looking pretty sad nowadays. That's so, but it's not bad though. It's not a bad thing. We can still do, you know, we can repair all of the frames, make sure the frames are as as you know as strong as possible. So what kind of um reinforcement could we put? Or would we actually have to remove the frame? If I remove the frame, is this gonna destroy this vehicle? Let's remove the frame from here. See what happens. Entire vehicle explodes. Okay, we've, we've removed everything from this spot. Okay, so there's nothing there. So if I wanted to install anything, it has to start out... Okay, cool. So you actually get a different list of items when you're looking at an empty space inside of a vehicle. So this is an empty space in the vehicle. We could either add in a frame, like we had, or we can do, I think, let's see, where was that ram? A spiked ram, a reinforced ram, placed at the edge of a vehicle to reduce damage taken in collisions and to increase damage delivered in collisions if the ram is the first part of the vehicle to collide. We need one spiked plating. Steel ram, we would need one steel plating. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. We could have a C drill, we could have spikes on it. We could Mad Max the crap out of our RV. Oh, this is super exciting. A forklift arm? Has a level... Wait, seriously? A pair of forklift arms. If it's... If it's in your line of sight within two tiles of another vehicle, you will automatically use it when you want to jack up the other vehicle to change its wheels. Don't we have... Don't, didn't we actually install ourselves a automatic pneumatic thing here somewhere? Or was that on a different playthrough I've done? I could have sworn at some point I had a self... Okay, it must not be on this one. There was like a self pneumatic pump. Do we, I thought we had that on this one though. Maybe not. It was like a... What would you call that? I don't even know. An air jack system. Yeah, that's what it was. An air jack. So all we had to do was have an air jack. And our own vehicle will be able to lift up to, repla uh, to repair tires whenever needed. This basically means if we put a... Um, come up to another vehicle and we want to take its tires, for example. We could just... As long as we've got this... Um, where did it go to? The... Uh, I lost it already. The C drill. Forklift arm. We could just roll right up to it, and we have a level 2 lifting quality and level 6 jacking quality. Holy crap, that's awesome. Earthen roller. <laughs> I'm so I'm so beyond amused about this stuff. So one steel plating. The steel plating required what? Requires eight lumps of steel. And a bunch of charges on the acetylene torch and whatnot. So we, we would get plenty of lumps of steel from, like, destroying things in the house, right? If I just go over to this house here, and I just try to grab my booken and smash down the the thing here, yeah, sure, we get two chunks of steel. Can I make scrap or uh, chunks of steel, by the way? Yep, I can turn scrap metal into chunks of steel, chunks of steel then into steel plating. Oh my gosh, this is so, so cool. 
I'm like a kid at Christmas who just discovered like the best toy under the tree before everyone else woke up. Uh, we also can install. What else can we install in the spot? We've got wire basket, shopping cart, some spikes here, heavy steel ram, hard plating. Oh yeah, we are totally gonna Mad Max the crap out of our truck. We can also put in an external tank here, a 200 liter steel drum. I imagine we don't know how to make the steel drum yet. And I don't think, was it under a tank or a drum? We only know how to make a 60 liter tank. That's fair. I mean, Sarah doesn't come out with knowledge of, of how to make a giant storage tanks here. The only other thing I'd like to find out is a better way to purify my water tank. That's that's one thing that I need to figure out about our water system. I don't know, maybe I need to remove the funnel um, and then, you know, do I guess clean the water once by removing... We could remove the tank. I think we would disassemble the water. We could pour it into another container. In fact, do we have our two steel frames here? We have our tanks somewhere or the tanks downstairs? Let's grab my tanks real quick. We've got two of them. Uh, let's unwield the Boken. Activate the scabbard, sorry. Boken. Okay, let's go here, drop off what we're doing. So if I were to examine the vehicle, if I were to go to my tank, remove the uh, water tank, what happens? The water tank is just gone, okay? So now we just have a 60 liter tank of water. And we couldn't, I guess we're going to have to just take it next to the fire and then just do a bunch of, um, a, a bunch of water purification, right? Unless I could do a bunch of tablets. Could I drop a tablet in there and then purify all of that water? I do think that though, this is going to give us quite a bit of water. So we're not going to have to do this that often. So it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if maybe once every couple weeks, we have to spend a day purifying enough water to be inside of the tank. How much did this have? Um... I can't quite tell because it's so freaking... Can I just pick up the tank so I can see it? It's got 240 charges or units of water. So that's quite a few drinks that you're going to be able to have. So not that big of a deal. All right. Well, cool. I'm super excited. Thank you guys so much for joining me for this one. Um, I think I'm going to wrap this uh, episode up just a little bit. But like I mentioned, we're going to try to have a little bit longer episodes of Cataclysm. I don't know if I'm going to do 45 minutes to an hour. But let me know what feels better for you. Either uh, 45 minutes to an hour would be fine with me because I really get involved in this game and I tend to spend more time, you know, focused on one particular area. But what I'm going to do between now and next episode is maybe do a bit of exploration with our RV to find out what else we might could want to make. Uh, we also have tons of options here for, you know, extending the vehicle if we wanted to. Now that I know how to make the... Um, the, the steel chunks, I might do a nighttime raid in a few houses here to really start stacking up on our scrapped metal and stuff like that. So thank you all so much for joining me. Thank you also to Dread and Fun Socks and everyone else in the Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead Discord for all your advice and help. If you guys are really interested and you want to join our community, we have a Discord link below in the chat in the read more section. Come join us and say hello and join that Discord DDA chat room. Discord DDA? Yeah, Cataclysm DDA chat room. All right, cool. Thank you all so much. My name is Tobel. This has been Sarah Brown, and I'll see you next time.